Hello, and welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel, Snips by Kelly. I'm Kelly, and I'm excited to start a five-part mini-series today, creating five different layouts that are focusing on everyday moments. So sometimes we feel pressure to have these great, amazing uh, layouts or events that we are the keeper of our memories and we feel like maybe um, to be scrap worthy, it needs to be that wedding or that birthday party or that perfect vacation. When in reality, for us especially, we live on a rural cattle ranch in the middle of nowhere with the nearest town being quite a small town. And so most of our lives are built on simple everyday moments. So I have stacks of photos, I don't know about you, that are just the simple things, um, taking a nature walk, petting the horses, goofing around and being silly, reading books, blowing bubbles, making cookies, playing in a cardboard box. So I feel like when my children and my grandchildren look back through all of the memory keeping that I've done, those types of photos will probably hit home to them even more so than some of those special events. Of course, I love scrapbooking those special events, but there is definitely a draw to embracing and being the keeper of the very simple everyday moments as well. So I'm so excited to share one process layout video every week for five weeks focusing on some simple everyday moments and memories and provide to all of you who want to come along for the ride some design space files, some tips and tricks, some new techniques, some uh, great but simple layouts. And I hope you'll come along and be inspired to scrap some of your simple everyday moments with me. So let's head on over to the scrap table and let's get started with the very first layout called Let's Play. Hooray! I'm so happy you're here with me today to create the first layout in a series of five that concentrates on everyday moments. So our first layout is called Let's Play, and it features our grandson Waylon James at no special event, just his everyday play. And we're using the Irresistibles cardstock as well as the Let's Play stamp and thin cut set. So if you're not familiar with our Irresistibles cardstock, it is a nice heavyweight paper that you can use in both card making and scrapbooking, and they have resist patterns on them. And the patterns will show through when you cover them with a medium like markers or ink or watercolors. So there's a checkered pattern, stars, a crisscross, diagonal stripe, florals, and dots. And what I love about our Irresistibles is they're 100% custom customizable because depending on what you decide to put on them determines the color that it's going to be. You can use multi-colors or single colors and it's amazing to watch the magic as you rub your color on how that pattern starts to show through. We're also using the Let's Play Stampin' Thin Cut set which is adorable and features toys and all of these different sentiments that would be great for children and boys. So let's take a look here at what we're going to add to the layout. So I thought it would be super fun to have a circle in the center to be able to put all of the toys in a circle and have a focal photo. So up in the upper right, you're going to see a tutorial where I've taught you how to use your Cricut pen and attach things to frames to create this yourself. And I've also included my free design space file as well. Now it is the job of dissecting the colors within the photos. So there's a little Sundance, some candy apple, some sapphire. There's a little green in the grass. There's some sapphire and some black. He has some bluebird in his sunglasses. And so I thought that when you look at the Stampin' Thin Cut, you see some great black outlines. So like the tires and pieces of the pail and the middle of the soccer ball. So if we were to go directly to color, we wouldn't get those 
those black lines. I love how Close to My Heart gives you the outline and then you can customize the color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp them all in intense black first and I'm just going to do a variety of icons so I have lots of them to play with. What I do when I'm loading my block is I lay the stamp flat on my um, all-purpose mat. I have my um, spongy Versa mat underneath for the best stamping and I actually line it up. There's a tiny line in the top of your block that helps you line up your stamp. You know they always say to use a block that is closest to the size of the stamp and that helps you to get a lot less smudging and to get a nice clean stamp. But use what you have um, and I typically um, will stamp the stamp many times to be able to get the stamp broken in. You can actually season the stamp on the skin and let some of the oils of your skin um, seep into that. That will season the stamp. But I also typically just stamp off on scrap paper until I feel like I've gotten a nice clean um, stamp. So I'm stamping off on some scrap paper here two or three times. And then I'm going to actually, when I feel that it's ready and it looks right, I'm going to stamp my thin cut. Now I'm just going to do uh, a couple here for you and then then I'm going to proceed forward off camera and just stamp all of the thin cuts. And I believe I did three of each thin cut uh, just to be able to um, try them all out and be able to know uh, which ones that I would want and have some extras. I also like to stamp all of the other stamps onto scrap paper. Even though I can see the stamps, they're clear stamps, it's kind of nice for me to get a feel for how those stamp and also to season them as well. And so I've stamped those up on scrap paper so I can get a good idea of what I might like to use. I did also stamp three of the soccer balls that do not have a thin cut and then I just fussy cut around those to add those to the toy. Now that I have all of the toys and the thin cut stamped, it's time to decide which patterns out of the irresistibles to use. So they're all great patterns, but thinking about Waylon, um, he has some star sunglasses in the photo. So I definitely feel like the stars would be a great background. So of course, as predictable as I am, I will probably gut that um, background and do a one inch frame so that I can reserve the center 10 by 10 irresistibles and you can see it's kind of hard to visualize because it's white on white but we're going to be doing some treatments on those irresistibles we're going to be inking those and changing the color so the first thing that we're going to do is cut a one inch frame all the way around the 12 by 12 star pattern so you're going to go to the one inch mark pop your blade in slide it down to the 11 inch mark pop your blade out rotate your paper go to the one inch mark pop your blade in go down to the 11 inch mark um, and um, continue that all the way around for all four sides so that you have a gutted frame that we can use in the back of the scalloped Cricut piece and then we can reserve that 10 by 10 center that's left over for lots of other fun projects so I'm just simply going to repeat that for the second sheet of the irresistibles you get two sheets each of six patterns of the irresistibles. So now in looking at what color we might want to treat that star frame with, there are three colors that are standing out to me the most. So we have candy apple, we have sapphire, and we have bluebird that I could ink those irresistible frames with. But what I've done is I've actually pulled the cardstock out first. I'm not using the cardstock on the background, but I'm a little nervous to go forward and ink those frames and then find out it's not the right color. So trying to use the candy apple in the back, it almost is a little clashy with Waylon's car. The red isn't quite the same. It's not horrible, so I could probably use the candy apple on some smaller pieces, but I don't feel it's a right fit for the background frame. I am, I swoon for sapphire. Sapphire will always be one of my favorite colors so I do feel like sapphire would go well there's sapphire in my son's shirt there's sapphire in my grandson's shirt um, but let's try the bluebird because he does have the bluebird in his sunglasses 
I'm not liking that as well as the sapphire. Totally a personal preference. I do think the bluebird would work, but I think the sapphire is winning out and we're going to treat those frames with sapphire ink. So, of course, I have my all-purpose mat out so that I don't get ink all over. I have my sapphire blending brush and my sapphire ink and one of the one-inch frames. And we're simply going to rub the sapphire ink around the frame and watch the magic happen as the resist star pattern begins to show through as we rub the ink around the edges. So, basically, you can rub harder or lighter depending on the color that you like. I'm loving the almost wash look by not getting it perfectly the same all the way around. There will be a little bit of light and a little bit of dark all the way around. It's such an amazing cardstock. I love that you can make any pattern, any color that you want to make it. Now you could even do multi-colors and you could switch out blending brushes and switch out colors and have a multi-colored pattern on the back. I am loving the way that that is going to pop and make that scallop frame just pop over the base. Now I typically am kind of weird. I'm not a fan of inking all the edges of all my pieces. There are lots and lots and I'm probably the majority of makers that love that look. Um, so many people feel like their pieces aren't finished unless they've inked the edges. I've never been a fan of it. Um, and one of the reasons is maybe because um, I'm not so great at it and it ends up looking kind of blotchy and not real clean. However, on this frame, I feel like I can go around and ink the outer edges of the frame and it will really add a lot. And because I can use my blending brush and blend those edges in after I have inked those edges, um, I do feel like it will look beautiful and it will add a lot. So there are times when I love to ink edges, but the majority of the time um, I don't ink every little piece that I add to a layout. Now you will talk to other makers and other people that feel that it absolutely makes their pieces pop, that they absolutely love that technique, and that they don't feel like their pieces are finished without doing it. So you do you, boo. You do it. If you love it, uh, you get that ink out and you ink all the edges. I am going to ink the edges of this today because I think it's really, really going to add. So I'm going to finish out this frame and the inking on this frame. And then I will do the second frame off camera. And then we will be ready to go with both of our base pieces. Isn't it pretty? Um, even though it's a little boy layout, I still say pretty. <laughs> Isn't it cool? How about that. Isn't it cool? Um, I love the Irresistibles and I think that they're quite underused actually and I do know up and coming we are going to be using a lot more of the Irresistibles um, and they're going to be featured in a lot of the artwork that's up and coming from close to my heart as well and they're going to be teaching lots of techniques with these so it makes it even more worthwhile to grab a package of that because we'll be able to use it in a variety of up and coming projects. I really love to be able to purchase things that I'm able to use up. Um, I don't like to have packages of things lying around. That's one of the reasons in my workshops that I create 10 and 12 page workshops because I like to use up all of the materials and supplies so I don't end up having uh, piles and piles of things um, laying around. I love to consume my consumables. So here I am just going back as I promised and inking the edges of the frame and it does really really add. I will finish all of that off camera and I will do the second piece and we'll head on over to the Versa mats. Now that we have our frames done, I have put one of each frame on the Versa mat because it's going to be a two page layout. Here are those Cricut pieces that we designed um, and hopefully you watched that tutorial. I'll, I'll link it in here right now again um, and it is a tutorial on how to add those lines around the edge of a scalloped frame and add those circles to the center um, with your Cricut pen. Now 
you could totally do that using a paper plate or a cutout circle. You can just go around with your journaling pen and add those circles to the center. You can easily journal around the scallop frame with your journaling pen as well. I just sometimes am lazy and I like the Cricut to do it and it also has a steadier hand than mine. So now I'm just taking a look at the photos and kind of deciding on placement. So I have two four by six photos on the right. My son Zachary with Waylon playing with him and pushing him in his car. And then I have just a snapshot of his trucks and his toys. I thought might add there's so much color in his trucks and his toys. And those are toys that he plays with at grandma's house at my house. And then a close up of his face. So his mom snapped that snap. So it's just a real close up of his face. There isn't all of his hair in there or anything, but I love that because it shows his smile. So those two photos on the bottom are three by three. The photo on the left hand side is uh, four by six. And of course, we're going to do some layering. We're going to add some more irresistibles to that. But my concept and my idea is simply to add some of these thin cuts around in a wreath. Now I use the wreath style layout. It's a classic. Uh, so many people use the wreath style layout on so many of their layouts. And But I have a tendency that when I use these wreath style layouts, they're florals, they're flowers, they're feminine. And I thought that it would be so fun for it to be a boyish wreath style. So now I'm thinking that I would love to add more irresistible patterns um, for some of the backgrounds. So maybe um, a long strip over on the right side, maybe um, a thicker strip and then a thin strip. Maybe um, I love the stripe or the diagonal. So I can see that maybe being a two inch strip, maybe two by 12. And then maybe the checkered being an accent strip, maybe three quarters by 12. And then adding some ink to that. I also can see photo matting or not really photo matting having some mats that I can offset on that left photo on the left side so I'm going to go ahead and go for it here we go we're going to cut it it's kind of scary uh, because uh, you don't want to mess up these patterns but it's a two by 12 and there's extra paper so it is okay but there is two by 12 of that but I think I'll go ahead and cut a four by six of that as well so let's go ahead and do a four by six and then we can use that over as a layer under the focal photo on the left page. So I've chosen my two patterns for that. Now let's choose an accent pattern. I like the checkered. We're probably going to add some regular cardstock in there as well to offset some of the patterns, but I'm going ahead with a three quarters by 12 inch strip to put over on the right side as an accent. And then another accent strip for the left page uh, um, uh, layering. And so I think I'm going to go with three quarters again and just do a six inch because that photo on the left is six inch and then the layer layering is four by six inches. So now we have three quarters by 12 and three quarters by six for the accent strips. We have two by 12 and four by six for the larger pieces. Now I'm going to grab my Sundance ink because I think that that would be a great accent color. I've kind of toggled back and forth between Honey Butter and Sundance. It's, it's kind of hard to decide because that yellow in his car isn't exactly the same as our colors, but I'm going to start with Sundance and see there's some colors that can coordinate in his toys as well. And I think let's start with that. And the beauty of the Irresistibles is let's say we get a layer on there and we, um, let's say we don't like it. We can actually do some blending with some other colors. So I actually am going to try on scrap paper here. I have some honey butter on the top and I have Sundance on the bottom. And so I'm going to make a decision here between Honey Butter and Sundance, and I already know the outcome. So here's a little spoiler. I end up using a combination. So I'm going to put some uh, nectarine on here as well. So we have nectarine, we have Sundance, and we have Honey Butter. 
So let's see what I decide first. I can't quite remember which one I layered on there first. So let's see which one I decided. Oh, the deliberation of colors, right? So it looks to me like I'm going with the top one. I'm going with honey butter first. And then you're going to see here in a little bit that I decide to rub over the top of that a little later with an additional color. So I'm going with the honey butter and we're just going to use the same technique that we used on um, the background. And we're just literally using our blending brush and we're going to blend all the way down the strip blending that in. I'm wondering and curious how many of you have used our irresistibles before and what you think of them. Shoot me a comment and let me know if you've used our irresistibles or if this is the first time seeing our irresistibles. I love the magic. I just love watching the transformation when you start to put the treatment on it and it just kind of comes to life right before your eyes. I would also love to hear from you you all about some of your everyday moments. Do you only scrap your special events, your weddings, your birthdays, your vacations, or do you scrap lots of everyday moments that have nothing to do with any particular uh, major event? I would love to hear some of the everyday moments that you love to create with. Um, I also am planning on continuing this series. There's four more parts to this series four more layouts using everyday moments. Now I'm actually going through to decide what color to use on the other colors that we're going to accent. So I'm going to put some ink on some scrap paper again. I know that it seems labor intensive to continually practice on scrap paper, but it's just something that I've always done. I get a little bit nervous about using the wrong color and having to start over, but you're actually going to see here that I do go forward with a color and end up not liking it. So it doesn't mean it's a perfect science. It doesn't mean that by practicing, it's going to uh, keep you from having to change something up later all the time. But I would say 90% of the time or better, it saves me time in the long run. Uh, sometimes I just get something put together and it doesn't look quite right and I take another run at it. So I'm kind of trying to decide what I think based on the photos and the strips would be the best accent color and I go with candy apple. And and I'm going to stop you right here. <laughs> <laughs> if you, uh, you're probably not following along with me without watching it um, all the way through first, but if you are one of those people that has ran to your stash and you've grabbed your irresistibles and you are creating right at real time with me, I change my mind. I use green apple. So I get the candy apple on to both pieces here. And then um, I get farther down the road uh, on the layout and it's not coming together and it's just not quite looking right. And this, I love this, so I don't feel like I've wasted this piece um, because it, but it reminds me of Christmas, like candy canes. And I couldn't quite get that thought out of my head once I started adding it to like the vehicles and the toys and all of that. So, uh, so yes, you're watching me do it. You're going to use the same technique, but then off camera later down the road, I change both of these pieces to green apple ink. So you can uh, go ahead and grab your green apple ink. And when I'm doing my candy apple, you can do green apple. I love that we can just wipe that off of our all-purpose mat. So the placement of the photo mat there is going to be relatively the same. Um, it's just going to be the green apple instead here down the road a little bit. So I'm just playing with those pieces. And the beauty of having those pieces is you can get a general placement for those and you can play around with those as the whole layout unfolds. 
Um, and as, as I play with pieces, I continually rearrange. So I will get placement, I'll like it, and then as I start to add pieces, I just kind of um, uh, start to um, play around and rearrange, and that's my favorite part. And I probably take way too much time doing that. I say that all the time on the video, but I kind of fuss around with my pieces. Now, here is where I decided that I wanted to come back in over the top of the honey butter with some Sundance, and I love it. I love it. And it really, really helped a lot to sort of coordinate. It's kind of like his yellow part of his car is, um, uh, it's a cross between honey butter and Sundance and that's the beauty of the irresistibles you can go back over them as many times as you need and sort of adjust the color so I'm just going to grab the long strip that's going to be for the right side as well um, and I'm going to add a little bit of the Sundance over the top of the honey butter I kind of like the combination of both of those colors all right, almost there. A lot of little bit of tedious prep work with this layout, but it's so worth it. I think, I hope uh, you guys can let me know. You can weigh in on that if you think it's worth it or not. So now over, gonna work a little bit on the base pieces on the right. So I'm going to take the two by 12 strip. Now you can see that I have changed it to the green apple. So much better, isn't it? I feel like it really makes the candy apple in his car pop more by adding that extra green tone. So I'm originally starting to add a 5 by 10, um, uh, a 5 by 10 sapphire piece, thinking that I want that contrast underneath. But what I end up doing is I end up taking the um, sapphire out and liking that white background but I do feel that there needs to maybe be a little bit of sapphire uh, contrast so I have a four by six sapphire um, uh, four and a fourth by six and a fourth sapphire piece over there on the left that I do end up using and then a uh, one fourth by 12 inch sapphire strip on the right page that I end up using just kind of as a transition between those two patterns. And yes, I love that so much more that's coming together. So now I feel like that's really going to look great with those photos on the right. So I did go ahead and map my photos with white daisy cardstock. So on the three by three, I did three and a fourth by three and a fourth. On the four by six, I did four and a fourth by six and a fourth. Um, however, an eighth of an inch would be great. Um, uh, you can go even smaller, just enough to give it that nice border. So now we can start working with some of our pieces and the first treatment that I try doesn't go so great. So I was being lazy and I thought maybe I could just ink the toys um, and use the same inks that I did on the Irresistibles. And it's a wonderful technique that I use on flowers and it works amazing, but it's not going the way that I would like it to go with the dump truck. I don't feel it's as defined and those toys are so cute. I'd like them to be more vibrant. So I think I'm going to stop right there and change gears and grab my tri-blend markers. And so I'm going to see if I can work through some of my tri-blend markers. And my system is to pull out the tri-blend markers, all of them that I think are going to work for, um, for the project. And I like to do light, medium, and dark, and then go through the colors and narrow those down. So I have chosen light true blue, light orange blend, dark light green, medium burnt orange, light dark red. I'm gonna add some accents with some ice gray. And I think the little tongue on the dinosaur is going to be pale pink. Um, and so basically I will list these out. Some people really, really need them listed out for them. And I will list them out. but in general, you can see uh, for the car, of course, I use the light or orange blend and a little bit of the gray. For the 
pale. I did pull in a little bit of the turquoise blue as well as the light true blue. Um, the rockets let me back up. I did light dark red and light true blue. The um, dump truck, I did medium burnt orange and a little bit of gray on the tires. And then the orange is the same uh, for the ball. The, the, the reds and the oranges for the others are the same. I only chose the light dark red and the light orange blend so that's what all the oranges and the reds are uh, and then of course that's what all the dark blues are all of the light true blue so I know that some people kind of get obsessed about having their colors the same so I will list those out so that you know the exact ones that I did use to coordinate but there's so many ways you could go um, you could definitely uh, totally depending on your play photos uh, your color could be completely different than mine. So now this practice sheet that I did when we were trying to figure out what color we were going to use on the Irresistibles was laying over to the side and I thought, you know what? How cute would it be to do a little inking in the background um, and add a little splash of color and maybe have a few tags coming out from the photo. So I I'm going to create the tags using two by three three inch pieces of cardstock. I have chosen Sundance, Nectarine, and White so far. Later in the video, I do add two by three tags for Green Apple. Um, let me think, do I add any other ones? I think I end up cutting the tags in three fourths to be able to add tags over to the right. So even though the tags are two by three, I actually create the two by three tags and then I cut them and create tag tops on the other halves. So what I do to create my tags, I do a two by three and then I run my ruler from the half inch mark on the Versamat to the half inch mark and I make lines and then I snip off that half inch and then I use the pattern, the one that I've created as a pattern, to put over all of the other two by three pieces. And then I simply use a hole punch and it's the fastest way to make tags. I do make tags on my Cricut all the time, but goodness, you can just literally in, you know, 30 seconds or less create your tags by doing it with this method. And then once you have a pattern, um, you can use that for all of your other patterns. So now I'm actually pulling out my inks um, and I'm going to use a green apple, candy apple, and sapphire, and I do end up adding a little Sundance, um, and just going to make a little bit of a wash in the background to work over as the example on my my practice paper and just pull out some of those colors and it's a great technique and it's something that's used a lot and then a lot of times people will actually splatter a shimmer brush over the top of that as well it's not a technique that I actually used on this but how easy would that be so I basically am just kind of getting a general mark as to where my photos will go and then I'm going to want to ink quite a bit under and over that so I think I'd like to start with the green here the um, green apple and I'm going to just do light I'm not going to go very dark and there's going to be pieces over the top so it's just going to make a hue probably what I'll do is I'll do the inking here then maybe a little over in that left hand corner and then a little bit over on the right side of the right layout uh, to sort of have three different spots that have that inking on it and it's just wonderful to be able to add a cute little hue in the background so now I'm going to go in with some sapphire I do um, keep my blending brushes in a carousel. I've seen lots of people that have great little hooks and areas. I have a label maker and I plan on there's a flat spot on the top of our blending brushes where you can actually put a little label, a cute little label, and I haven't ever done that. I'm 
I use our colors so much that I literally know them all by heart. But I think it's a great idea, especially if you're not as familiar with your colors, to label each of your blending brushes. So I came back in with some Sundance and some Candy Apple. Um, so you can see I have those four colors on there and I will be adding some tags under the photo to come over the top of that. I think I may end up adding one more color, like a green tag. Um, but yeah, I think it is a good uh, you know, way to keep the, your brushes organized. So before we got these wonderful soft blending brushes, we had um, or had and still have... Um, uh, sponge daubers and they fit on your finger and you can use those to, to daub and I still love those and we actually had some foam inserts where you could keep each of your sponge daubers separated according to color so that they were you know you could reuse them over and over and I definitely use my blending brushes over and over our blending brushes come in a pack of three um, and so I uh, as I need a color I open a new pack and then I then I use that same blending brush over and over and over. So you can see I kind of repeated that um, blending over on the lower left. Not a lot of it's going to show. Some of it's going to show. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the right side. So I've actually created um, a, a rule of three and a visual triangle. So you can see that uh, if you look from the lower right to the middle and then down to the lower left it creates a triangle that hopefully will draw your eye across the page and make that left photo of Waylon James a focal point. All right so here we go we have done a lot of prep work great job <laughs> Sometimes I feel like all of it is the prep work. And then when you finally get to the culmination of, um, of it all, it's so wonderful to see it just unfold. So I've gone one and a half inches in, um, and I'm just adhering both of those 12 inch strips, two by 12 and three fourths by 12 inch strips that we treated uh, with the ink on the Irresistibles, adding a sapphire transition strip in between those and it is the light side I believe I've used. I don't know why, but it just felt um, with that irresistible star pattern in the background, it felt like the light side uh, just coordinated the best. And now I love that. I think it's just enough to add that those contrasting colors underneath those photos. And then you'll still see a little tiny bit. I'm going to add some tags over on the right. So you're not going to see a ton of that inking, but you're going to see a little bit of that inking peeking through. Love just watching him play. I love his Face. He gets so excited and he's such a happy boy most of the time. He is, um, let's see, 20 months old now. So um, he he'll turn three in October, in mid-October, three, two, he'll turn two in mid-October. And so there is a teeny tiny bit of the, what they call the terrible twos coming through where he can be really strong-willed. Uh, for example, if it's time to get out of the pool and he doesn't want to listen to grandma, he gets a little stubborn. But overall, he's a sweet and loving and happy, happy boy. All right, so just guesstimating here. I'm not really giving you any measurements but you can actually see on the Versamat kind of where I did that upper area and I may I may move it again a little bit uh, just toggle it just a little bit but I'm just playing with layers just layering these pieces in a fun way and toggling those so that you just see bits and pieces of those layers peeking through and I love now that we're starting to see everything come together and all all of our hard work prepping and treating all of those little pieces individually will be so worth it. It isn't like we do these um, time-consuming layouts all the time and actually um, now that all the details are figured out hopefully I've saved you all a little time when you come back in you can just go to town and grab all of those. So I put that uh, the yellows uh, uh, the um, Sundance and Honey Butter strip up a little tiny bit higher for some added interest. I'm going to be 
cutting off these tags to give me some extra. And then um, I feel like there's some title opportunities and some word opportunities that we're going to be able to use perhaps on some tags, perhaps directly on the page. So I'm playing around with some of my pieces. And once we start adding all the color from these pieces, it gets super fun. And then there's some stamps on the stamp set that we can come in in between these pieces, some little foofs, some little arrows, some little stars. We can do some popping up of some of these pieces with foam tape. And this is one of the reasons I like to make extra icons. I think I made three of each icon um, so that I have extras to play with and then I can do some decorating over on the right. That way you can double up a few of the pieces, pop up a few of those pieces and give them dimension. Um, and you can play around with different colors. I like having different colors of cars, different colors of soccer balls. The dinosaurs stay green and the um, the buckets or the pails stay, stay the same, the same um, and the rocket stays the same, but you can add a little variation with a couple of the pieces that could be any color. So there's that green apple tag that I said I went ahead and made. Again, those tags are start out as two by three, and then I do a little bit of trimming or cutting off of those to give me the tags for the other side. Instead of creating additional tags, I end up just cutting off the bottom of those tags and then rotating them over and making those into tags as well because most of the tags that I created aren't going to show. So here I'm taking the bottom of the tag, I'm adding that to the top pattern, snipping those off and just quickly creating even more tags. Tags are a go-to. Wow. You can just use tags for journaling. You can use them for embellishments and for decorating pages. You can use those as backgrounds to bits. If you just need a little something behind a bit to give it a contrasting color or a coordinating color, I use tags a ton. Um, and so we will be adding, um, I kind of decide later to add some dots or some bling to the tags to finish them off. You could also add twine or strings to those tags. Um, and so now we have a more finished look and I'm going to do a little bit of stamping or journaling on the white tag. Um, and then by having those extras, I'm just putting some of the larger pieces and smaller pieces of the tags in different places and rearranging those. I really do feel like adding that green apple helped. It was getting a little bit washed out with too much of the same color family with the honey butter and the sundowns coming together loving how it's coming together I decide to get the tags up a little closer to the photo to leave a little bit of space for a title I'm kind of trying to decide I love let's play and actually I named this layout let's play so I definitely want to use the let's play stamp but I love the um the stamp love this boy i mean it just feels so right i look at his face and i do love this boy there's also a longer stamp that says awesome and i actually love curving our stamps onto a block and coming around the top of a circle it's wonderful that our acrylic shapes are able to be curved on our blocks so that we can actually make rounded stamps um, and stamp in a rounded position. So now it's just the fun part of me going around. I have sped up this portion. I probably should have sped it up even more because I take my time and I play around with all the bits and I organize all the bits in different places and kind of get them where I want them and then I get them where I want them and then I add more bits and then I take some bits away and I rearrange some bits. So some people say, I don't know how to cluster. I don't know how to arrange. I don't know how you decide where to put your bits. And this is how I decide. I just literally move them in different places. I do try to keep in mind the rule of three. I do try to keep in mind keeping some flat and popping some up. I do try to keep in mind visual triangles. Um, but it, for the most part, it's all about just laying them where they look cool to you um, and playing around with them. So now I'm 
practicing a little bit here, putting my stamps in places where I think they might go. I do love having that love this boy right there. I think I can fit the let's play over on the white tag on the right. I do want to curve the awesome stamp up there in the um, upper right corner of the left page. I want to fit wild thing in there. I know I'm getting a little crazy with words, but he is a wild thing. <laughs> and so somehow maybe by stamping wild thing on some additional cardstock, um, maybe some extra white cardstock, I will be able to add that in there. Maybe over on the left, maybe on a tag. Uh, we'll see. But let's go ahead and do a little bit of a treatment here by adding the, or uh, not a treatment, a stamping here by adding the awesome stamp and curving it on the block. What you're going to see here is that um, I put it on there backwards, and so it's spelling awesome backwards. <laughs> Oh, I hope you guys do that kind of thing as well. So basically all you do is start forming it with your fingers and you just kind of form it to the curve and you can keep moving it and moving it a little bit. Um, and I'm showing you here how I'm just trying to get the curve and it doesn't work to put it down first. You actually have to use your fingers and curve it. And this is a technique that I use all the time to just kind of um, have a fun play. The stamps don't always have to be straight. So I'm stamping off because it's a brand new stamp and I haven't seasoned this stamp. I haven't used it yet. And now when I get good coverage, I'm gonna go right around those Cricut lines love it yay love it so much there's so many little stars and different things now you can see that um i was uh, not paying attention and i had a little bit of black around the edges of my stamp and got a little bit of a, a goober or whatever on my page and i'm just going to cover it right up with a cute little car no problem that does happen sometimes but i'll show you here how you need to be a little more careful when you're stamping directly on the page and I typically will use my stamp chamois or a wet wipe and I will um, wipe around the stamp and just make sure that I am keeping that nice and clean. And that is sometimes when I get in a hurry or I think I'm going on too long, I get in a little bit of a hurry and I go too fast. And you definitely don't want to go too fast when you're stamping directly on a page because if you had to start over at this point, most of the time, I'm sure all of you know, I make boo-boos all the time. And most of the time you can find a way to cover it up or make it look like you did it on purpose. All right. Now, what to do with Wild Thing? I want to use Wild Thing. He is a wild thing so I feel like I'm gonna go ahead here now and do let's play on the little partial tag uh, because it's all about let's play a child's work is play so I'm gonna add that to this white tag and look at me I'm being a good girl since I had my boo-boo <clears throat> and I'm making sure it's nice and wiped so cute I love this stamp set I'm going to add that over on the right here and just kind of toggle that, add that little green car as a transition. It's really taking shape, you guys. It's looking so, so cute. We're so close. We're almost there. I kind of want to use Wild Thing over there, um, but I'm not finding a way to really make it work. So we're just going to think about that. I ended up adding it to a green tag up on the right side. If you can see it on the left side of the right page, I ended up adding it to a green tag and then adding the red ball in there to add a transition between the two words. I didn't want words by words. And so I added the transition in there. So I pulled out just a bunch of partially used bling from my stash. And of course I'm drawing to the stars and so now I've went around and I've showed you how I popped some of those up I left some of those flush I love the little Legos I love the little stars and so I want to figure out where to add those Legos because I definitely want them I can put those over on the lower left or do I just want those as a toy
joy around the circle ring. And I do believe I decide to add those as an additional toy around the ring, which will mean that I will need to color those right on the background. I'm super tempted to add those to the left side, but I just kind of want to keep with the theme um, of having them around the ring. So um, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and stamp those again right onto the ring and perfect. Now I can come back in with my markers and I can give those a splash of color. And now I want to use some of those additional foofs. I want to just kind of go around in different places and add some little stars, some bigger stars, some little star clusters and just decorate. This is such a playful, fun layout that you can, you, there are a lot of times where less is more like you can there's a fine line between having enough and having too much and where it gets a little too busy but with a layout like this you can have so much fun adding extras around that circle and being able to really be playful and fun and having it be a child's layout I love being able to let my inner child come out and just be really over the top and fun with things like this we are so getting there you guys thank you so much for hanging with me i really hope that you'll uh shoot me some comments and let me know what you think about the different techniques what things you like what things you don't what things you uh love to do in your own personal scrapping um tell me about your grands or your children um if you are scrapping your own children i absolutely love when younger people come around. Uh, I get so worried that there are so many photos on people's phones and that younger people aren't getting their memories into the books. And um, so if you are a younger person that's following along that is actually scrapping your own children instead of grandchildren like me, please give me a shout. I'm. It makes me so happy. It makes my heart so happy. So I have a daughter uh, who is, let's see, she's 32. She's our middle child and she has three daughters of her own and she does a lot of our quick and easy layouts. She'll do our craft with heart. She'll do our cut above kits that are already cut um, and she has done her own uh, scrapping. She'll do her, she did her wedding um, but you're busy. You are just so, so busy. And um, younger people, oh, not just younger people, my goodness, I always felt like at my age, I would be like, just super relaxed and sitting around. And when my kids graduated, I was <laughs> boohooing around thinking, ah, I'm, I'm, my life is over. And oh my goodness, my life has just begun. It is just amazing and incredible. Uh, how it's full, but to try to find time with small children, I my hat's off to all of you. I hope you stick with it and it just continues to be something that grows with you that you find little moments to get these memories. My children treasure the things that I've written about them and the things that I've put about them in my album, so I hope you'll do it. So now I'm going around with some odds and ends. Uh, the wonderful thing about our dots is we have stars and circles and all different uh, sizes in our dot so it allows you to take a few off of each color so I'm adding those to the tags I've added all the little star stamps and the little foofs around and it's beginning to look so adorable and finished I hope you've had fun with me thanks for hanging with me especially for the parts that got a little long we had to do quite a bit of little prep work for this one but it actually is so worth it and so adorable I hope that if you haven't already you'll hit subscribe and that you'll hang out with me. There's four more layouts in our Everyday Moment series, so I hope you'll hang out with me so that you end up with 10 full pages of Everyday Moments when we get done with this series. So I'll see you next week when I post layout number two in the series. Thanks so much. Happy scrapping, everyone, and thanks for sharing the love of paper crafting with me. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.